Hey, this is Ben from Harrison Consoles. I'm the Mixbus product manager and I've been working with Mixbus for 10 years. It's kind of my baby. Uh, we have brought on a Mixbus product specialist, Nathan, who is a fantastic guitar player, big tech head, all kind of guitar gear, all kind of DAWs and recording and all those kind of things. Uh, you guys will get to know him on the forum. Super cool guy. We are looking at Mixbus 7.1. Nathan came into the company about halfway through the time we were developing 7.1, so he's had a lot of input to that. You're going to see him on some videos, but today we're going to talk about a specific feature that's a little complicated, so I wanted to dive in, and it's uh, an update to our playlist system. And Mixbus has had playlists for a while, but they were a little tricky to use, especially when you were working with multi-track comps. So if you had a multi-track drum take, or if you have your bass and guitar, for example, um, it could get tricky to keep things synchronized. And I used to encourage people to record in layers, but Nathan has shown me the light that if we want to multi-track and keep up with the takes more easily, layers are great for the final editing. But if we want to capture some stuff, keep up with the names and be able to bop between them easily, playlists are a lot better uh, feature. So we kind of hot-rodded the playlists. And there's a new pop-up dialog that lets you select which playlist you're on, copy-paste between them, but most importantly, it gives you some cool selections of how to make a new playlist or to make a copy of your playlist. And instead of doing it by group, we're allowing you to, for example, make a new playlist for all of your record arm tracks. So we're specifically just plugging in guitar and bass. We're going to assume the drums are already recorded, maybe the vocals are already down, and we're going to do some takes. And we're going to make a new playlist for each take, but we're just going to do it on the tracks that we have armed because that's what we're dealing with. And we don't want to go make a group because the guitar and the bass aren't in a group together. And right. we don't want to select them because we may have other stuff selected for some other reason. We just want to make a playlist on what's record armed. Right. And that's just one of the many improvements we've made. But we'll give you a quick demo here. So we're going to go over to the screen. Nathan can show us what we got going on. All right. So we have a blank session here just with a superior drummer loop on a track. It's a MIDI track. And you can see, just for example, that we do have a bass up on the top, but we also have a guitar on the bottom. So they're physically not next to each other in the session, but we can still group them together with a group ID that gets printed when you record with playlists. So I think it's really cool. And for example, I can go in here and choose the question mark symbol, and that's going to bring up our select playlist for bass dialog box. When we can actually, under the scope, we want to make a new playlist for record arm tracks. So we can either do that for this track or group, record arm tracks or all tracks. So we're going to choose record arm tracks and we're just going to, for fun... Alright, I'm going to stop you, Nathan. Go ahead. Because in the past, you would have to now create a take so that they knew those were connected. But we don't even have to do that anymore. If we just record these two tracks right, right. now then we'll be able to select this playlist. It will know that we've recorded these two together and it'll tie those playlists together. So right. let's just go ahead and do a quick take. All right, so this is gonna give us two measures of pre-roll and here we go. All right, I forgot which key we're in, so we're going to definitely have to redo that. <laughs> yeah, right. my volume was and down. And your volume so. was down at the start. <laughs> okay, so clearly we have to redo these two playlists. So uh, we'll just leave those in. We could just record over those. We could delete those, but we're going to leave those in as a playlist. And now we're going to make a new playlist. All right, so now we're going to make a new playlist for record arm tracks. By hitting that button and pressing new, you can see the regions disappear because we're actually on a new playlist. And let's just record again. One, two, three. Okay. You're hitting the limits of my musician. Whether you like it or not, that's, that's what we got. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's our second take. Now pop open the dialog, press shift and, and uh, question mark, right? 
Okay. So there's our bass track. Now do that, select the guitar track, just for demonstration purposes, select the guitar track. Right, now we can see that both of these tracks, because we recorded together, they both have a, uh, the basic name, which was the playlist before we tried to name anything. Right. And then they have our take, whatever that is. I can't see it from here. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so they're already tied together, and if you select the prior playlist, they'll mm -hmm. both switch together. Right, so check this out. Here's the bass. And also automatically chooses the guitar. Right. Now that we know that, we don't really have to look at both dialogues. So you can hide whichever one you don't want. Yeah. Maybe move that guy over to the side where we can keep up with what we're doing. And now we want to make another playlist for our record arm tracks. Correct. Let's do yet another pass. Maybe we'll get it this time. Maybe. Uh, so that's three different takes. I mean, can you comp something from those? Yeah, let's comp something. All right, let's figure it out. So at this point, we can just make a new playlist for record arm tracks. Yeah. And we'll call it comp. Excellent. All right, so now that disappears. But what if you actually like a take that you did? You just want to like, pull other pieces I from so it. The third one was definitely the best one. All right, so we're actually just going to copy this playlist. And we're going to call it Comp2. So now we're, this is our starting point that we can now go to the other playlist and just kind of pull different pieces. Right. And it's really important to remember at this phase of the process that you want to have your edit point set to playhead. And I'll show you why in a moment. But uh, Correct. Yeah, go set it to playhead, Nathan. So I'll press 2 up here, and I'll change it from mouse to playhead. Great. And then just press play from there. Well, if you want to, but I was going to suggest you select a range. Okay. Now play play just that section, and we'll see if we like that. Cool. So that's that sounds fine, but let's switch to a different playlist and hear how those two tracks sound on a different playlist. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's do that. Here we go. So going now, we're going to take one. Another thing we can do is we can hit the bracket symbol that will create our loop points and then just press L to loop it. Now I can just change between the different ones yep, as, as super I want. Cool. I didn't so this is take nine. Here comes ten. Oh, I was sloppy there. I was behind too. Oh, it was you. Okay, so we've heard all three. They're all pretty bad, yeah, but they're... the best one, <laughs> but let's say we wanted to copy the part of the best one. Uh, well, let's go find a better take and copy it into comp two. Okay. So, well, we first have to figure out what's wrong with comp two. So let's just listen. Okay, so let's see what I did. Let's make a range selection here from this measure. And let's go to take nine. Let's just listen. Okay, so I like the way my little trill thing happened there. So that worked. All right, do you like what you did on the bass? I do, but widen out that range a little more uh, to catch the end of your trill there. So go to the, take your mouse, yep, right there. Stretch that out a bit. Take the snap off. Yeah. So maybe like pull it there. Yeah, try that. All right, so we're going to copy. And then we can go to Comp 2, and we can paste it. Right. Now notice, because we're, we're using our edit point as the playhead, it pasted 
where the playhead is and not where our mouse is. And that's why it's important to make that setting change. Correct. Um, also notice though that I didn't really, ha I mean, I didn't have both of these tracks selected. So right. I only did so let's it for do it the again. bass. Okay, do it again. So go down and select the guitar track. Command click the guitar track and the bass track. So they're both selected. Yep. Excellent. Now I'll go to take whatever it was, take nine, copy, and paste it there. Okay. Cool. Okay, so that So works. we've now comped both our bass and guitar, even though they weren't in the same group, and we can pop around and copy-paste around all we want. And then at the end of the whole process, we still have layers to work with when we want to really fine-tune and crossfade those notes into each other. Right. We can go in and do that with the layers. Yeah, that's great. Well, let's listen to the next half and see if there's anything we want to change. So we're back on comp two, which is our main comp track here. Let's loop the end of it here and see if there's maybe a better option for the ending. So press our bracket for our loop points and then we'll press L. Okay, go ahead and take nine. Ooh, I kind of like that one. And here's a uh, take 10. Yeah, I thought I didn't I thought we kept going. Let's go with let's go with 9 on this okay, one. Okay, cool. So we're going to hit copy, go to comp 2. Now we can delete this portion too, right? We should probably first delete if it. If we so don't want them to be layered, we right. can just delete it outright. Yeah, good so idea. So I can press delete and then paste. And now it's pasted in there with nothing else below it or above it. Right. All right, let's go ahead and listen to that. Let's create, now that we have this thing edited together like we want it, mm -hmm. I know we're going to do some game changes. We're going to add some automation. We're going to do all kinds of things. So why don't we make a playlist for all tracks, which in okay. this case is only two, but we're going to make right. a new playlist for all our tracks and we're going to timestamp that lunchtime Thursday so sure. that we know that's where we were. And okay. now, if we go back, if we want to come back to where we are today, we'll be able to come back to this. It's sort of a snapshot, but it doesn't mess with your EQ settings, any of your mix settings. It's right. purely your edits. So just click Copy Playlists for All Tracks. Okay. So we're changing the scope to All Tracks, and we're going to hit Copy Playlist. And when you say, like, lunchtime. Yeah. Lunch dash Thursday or something, but it doesn't matter. All right, so there we go. Now, we can always get back to that. We can go back and continue working on Comp 2 if we like mm -hmm. and start adding our gain writing and our plug-in automation and delay sends and blah, 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 blah. But if we ever get in trouble, we can switch our edits back to where we are today. No, that's good. All right, so for example, we're going to go back to Comp 2, which is as you said. So some new shortcuts for you guys is using the curly bracket to actually change from overlaid to stacked. So there's our stacked view and there's our overlaid view. You'll notice that uh, in that first time we were comping together, you didn't delete what was underneath first. Correct. Which sometimes you want and sometimes you don't. In this case, you probably didn't want it, but yeah. that's what it's fine. It's what you did. So right now you're seeing the three takes stacked on top of each other. But on the right side where you deleted what was over there first, mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. just have the extra layer. Yeah, you can see that there. So now it goes from here, then it goes up to the next layer, then it ends right there. I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, delete that. Delete now, people who are things. already really familiar with mixed bus editing know what you can do with that. You can now crossfade that point while seeing what's below it. Mm-hmm. And do, all the, and do all the cool tricks that we always had. But that's more of an editing process and not the take management process. So show me this, uh, this new slip editing feature that you're so excited about. Okay. So we can see by the grid here that maybe Ben was a little ahead of the beat on a few notes. Never. Not a big... You're right, always right on time, right? <laughs> so I can choose this and hold Command-Shift. And now when I click, left click on my mouse, I'm able to slide the region back and forth, which you could actually do previously, but your mouse had to be on the edge 
of the region and not just anywhere you wanted to click. Right. So this is a little bit more intuitive, a little bit faster for you guys to get that figured out. And you can see I really didn't even have to edit anything. I just simply slid it over and now all these beats lined up. So you were consistent in your playing, <laughs> just consistently <laughs> ahead. <laughs> I like to be heard as a bass player. All right, so maybe there's something else in here that we can adjust. Let's look at the guitar thing. See, I was a little bit of a head on this beat. So let's just go here. I'll change my edit point to mouse and just hit S wherever my mouse is. And let's hit it there. So I can kind of move this one back a little bit. All right, so let's listen to this point. See, that's great. So what I see here is we still have the freedom to use layers, but just have the consistency of using playlists yeah, for to the keep recording things, side. Yeah, to keep more organization. I mean, that's a more common feature of playlists is that you can right. name them and move between them um, more in a more structured way. Now, Mixbus lets you have layers on all those playlists. So, for example, if you want to make two different comps, and this is what mm -hmm. separates us from maybe a lot of other tools, um, a lot of other dolls have a, a swipe to comp sort of feature, mm -hmm. which is super cool. But it does fall over in a couple of ways. Uh, one of them is you generally only have one of those things. So you can make one comp, but that's all you get. Right. Whereas we can, we'll let you make one, two, three, or four, as many as you want, comp playlists which you can then swap between later in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also give you the full flexibility of the layering. So one of the awesomest things about Mixbus from, from the very beginning is that you could take these regions and layer them on top of each other, almost like you would do with a graphics editing program. And so the topmost layer is what you hear, but you get to choose how blurry you want to make the edges to blur from one note to the next. And it's more complicated than a typical crossfade situation. You can stack two or three things on top of each other. You can place just a note. You can even make them transparent so that you hear both of them at the same time. All yeah. kinds of cool advanced things. But that got cumbersome in the recording takes process. So now we have the best of both worlds. Right. I like that. Mm -hmm. 